side. Receiver comes off to the near side. Sandy Rogers snap to uh, Russell, rolls out to his left. He's going to scramble, and he's hit on the sidelines and driven out of bounds at the 49-yard line, so he picked up one. Good coverage by the secondary for De Dakota. to state and the hard rockers have third down and seven now yeah it looked like that was designed roll out to the left side with maybe jason bilstein coming across on a drag route maybe five eight yards deep on that and he just up in traffic so uh nick russell just tucked third and seven hard rockers at their 49 shotgun here's russell's pass right side it's caught the receiver hit immediately though at the 45 yard line tony ostheimer on the reception a gain of six leads the Hard Rockers short of the first down. Yeah, and kind of a bad route there by Tony. I hate to call him out on that, but you know you got to get deep. You got to get at least two yards past the first down and then come back. So when you make that catch, you got the first down instead of going to the marker. And he worked back a little bit, and it looks like he's a yard short. Well, the Hard Rockers, being very aggressive, are going to go for it here on fourth down and about uh, a yard to go. And his handoff right side, and that's a first down run for Everett Brill. Yeah, a little surprised on that call. I thought maybe Nick Russell might just try and sneak that one behind one of his big horses instead of kind of going back about three, four yards for the handoff. Well, Everett Brill, you might recall, scored two short yardage touchdowns in that jumbo offense down by the goal line against Montana Tech. And he's become a short yardage back for the Hard Rockers, and he picked up the first down, picked up three yards yeah, on fourth down. Coach Kras has got a lot of uh, a lot of faith on what he can do on those short yardages. Those timers in motion, snap to Russell, shoots it over the middle, and it's caught for a first down inside the 15-yard line by Andy Smith. No, by uh, Wallachek. Wallachek making the reception down at the 18-yard line. Ed, who caught the touchdown pass earlier. Yeah, it just ran a little seam route there. It looks like they're playing a three-deep zone, and he just kind of read the seam, seam, and Nick Russell can kind of pick on which one he wants to go with, depending on what that safety does. Caught it at the 18, tackled down at the 12. That's a 29-yard pickup, and it's first and 10 at the 12. And here's the give to Dale. Cuts it to the right side, and he is hit down at around the 10-yard line. So Jamie Dale picked up two yards, and it's second down and eight to go. The ball just outside the Dakota State 10 with 2.37 to play here in the first quarter. The Hard Rockers leading seven to nothing. Nick Russell's out of the shotgun. Two men stacked to his left, Barth and Dale. Here's the snap. It's Jamie Dale, nowhere to go, down at the 10-yard line. And that'll set up a third and eight to go. Yeah, the Dakota State uh, interior linemen there weren't fueled. Weren't uh, fooled on that one there. Kind of just running the delayed screen right up the middle. Two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Seven nothing Hard Rockers. And here is the shotgun. Nobody in the backfield with Nick Russell. Five receivers out. Russell back, throws it over the middle. Caught inside the five. That'll be close to a first down. Jason Beilstein, the tight end, caught it at the three-yard line. It looks like they're a yard short of a first down. And I would expect if the Hard Rockers went for it at the 41, with a yard to go, they most likely will go for it. Nope, they're not. Andy Smith is coming in for the field goal. Yeah, Jamie Dale is standing on about the 20-yard line, really pleading with Kratzer to keep him in there and let him run it. But uh, Coach Kratzer is going to go ahead and take the points while he's got the win. This will be... A 20-yard field goal attempt. The ball is on the far side hash, so a bit of an angle for Andy Smith. Yeah, delay of game on this one. And the Hard Rockers will be called for a delay of game penalty, which will move it back. That moves the ball back to the 15-yard line. It does appear to me, Ryan, in all honesty, the Hard Rockers to me do seem a little sluggish offensively, even though they scored the touchdown and moved the ball fairly well. On this drive, uh, down for a field goal attempt, they had a penalty with 
Kentucky. Here for a five yard field goal. This is good. 101 to play in the first quarter. Andy Smith, two for two in his field goal attempts this season. Uh, take a 10 to nothing lead on Andy Smith's field goal from 25 yards. Dickinson State has taken a 12 nothing lead over Jamestown. That game is in the third quarter in Jamestown. Minot State leads Valley 21 to 7. That game in the second quarter at Valley. And up in Spearfish in the first quarter, Black Hill State leads Mayville State 13 to nothing. And in major college football, number eight, California defeated Minnesota 35 to 21. And uh, Ohio State, number 11, they beat Toledo 38 to nothing today. Penn State, number five, they beat Temple 31 to six. And we'll have more scores for you a bit later. Michigan beat Eastern Michigan by a score of 45 to 17. Michigan ranked 25 this week. Andy Smith to uh, kick it off. Here's his kick with the win, driving McIntyre into the end zone. He's four yards deep, and he's going to bring it out. He's to the 10. He runs to the wide side of the field, uh, the 15, the 20, and a good return as he is finally bumped out of bounds. Oh, he stepped out back at around the 24-yard line. So he returned that about 28 yards out to the 24-yard line. And Dakota State with 55 seconds to play here. In the first quarter, has the football first and ten, moving from our left to our right, and the Hard Rockers leading by a score of ten to nothing. Receivers to the left and to the right. Allen's the running back. Joe, uh, Paul Bagala, the quarterback, takes the snap, hands it off in the backfield. Allen's going to be swarmed under right around the line of scrimmage over on the far side of the field. And down at the 24-yard line, no gain on the play. Maybe a slight loss, and it's second down. Yeah, it looks like we actually got a new running back for Dakota State, Mike Trimble in there. Trimble is in there. He was the one who carried it. So it's second down. We'll still call it 10 for Dakota State. Drew Allen is back now as the running back. And here's a whistle from Jim Aberley. And we'll see what this flag's about. Dakota State is retreating. Illegal substitution, Dakota State huddled with 12 players. They cheated. I'm telling you, you don't see that call very often, but uh, it does happen. You know who, how that rule was instituted? How was I'll, that? I'll, I'll tell you about that because I remember it, it came from the pros, and I'll tell you who, who it was. The ball is back now at the 17-yard line. Here's the snap. Allen off the right side, cuts it up over the middle across the 20 and gets out to around the 26-yard line. Good run there by Allen. Nets him about uh, seven yards before Joe Burke makes the stop, and that's the end of the first quarter. 10 nothing Hard Rockers here on KKLS after the first quarter. Nebraska, when did they start? Oh, they don't start to one. Well, they should be starting. They should be starting right about now. Ryan doesn't want any updates because he's taping the Nebraska game. How's Texas doing? Tonight? Oh, they got the late game, I think. <coughs> hey, what time did we score that first touchdown? 13-42. I miss your little cheat sheets. What? Where you have the score on the top and the from last year? Did you print them off this year? Are you talking like these? No. 
I'll find one from last year. Years ago, this was probably the late 70s or early 80s, Bud Grant, who was coaching the Vikings, used to put 12 or 13 guys in the huddle so teams could not change defensively. That lasted for one season, and Don Shula got the rule changed. First down, Dakota, or third down, Dakota State at their own 26. They need about eight yards to go. Bagala on the draw play to Allen. Good hole up the middle, across the 30, 35. First down run on the draw play, coming out to close to the 39-yard line. You know, 13 really, yards on that carry before Tommy Lundsman made the stop. And that's really a great call by Dakota State. I'm sure everybody on the School of Mines defense was thinking, now that they've got the win, third and eight, third and nine, somewhere on there, they're going to come out passing. It was a nice draw play up the left side. So the Trojans get a first down. And they'll start now first and 10 at their own 39-yard line, moving from our right to our left with the wind here in the second quarter. Receivers left and right. High formation for Begala. Here's the snap. Here's the toss on the sweep. It went back to Mike Trimble, and he slips and goes down at about the 35-yard line. They ran the option down the left side, and Trimble loses four yards. It'll be second and 14. The turf made the tackle on that play, although the Hard Rockers had it very well defended. Yeah, they did a great job there. Everybody's got their assignments on that. You stick with your guy regardless of what happens with the play. Someone's got the quarterback, and the other one's got the pitch guy. Hard Rockers with their three-man down lineman on the line of scrimmage. Three receivers right, one to the left. Toss going to the right side again to Trimble. He's going to be hit at the 33 and driven back. No gain. Again, a loss on the play. Leading the tackle was Eric Yeish. Yeah, and the one that made that one happen was Tyrell Anderson, who we haven't called yet today, but he was the one that kind of blew that play up from the get-go. So we have the ball at the 33-yard line. Dakota State has it, third down, and they have 16 yards to go. They have to get up just shy of the 50-yard line for a first down. Yeah, this is a big play for the defense here to get a stop. Hard Rockers allowed only 18% conversions on third down against Montana Tech. Here's a deep ball, right sideline, and it is caught, and this is going to be a big gain for the Trojans inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. Stacy Berg on the reception for uh, Dakota State. Perfectly thrown pass by Bagala, and a big gain. Yeah, bad angle by the safety on that deep right, uh, right side there. He kind of took a bad angle. Got to kind of tried to catch the receiver where it was at, not where the ball was going to be. So good catch and throw by Dakota State. 50 yards on the pass play. Trojans first down at the Hard Rockers 17. Receivers left and right. I formation. Magala takes the snap. Here's the play fake. He's under pressure. Shoots it out to his right. Caught. Trimbles inside the 10. Breaks a tackle at the 5. Hurdles his way into the end zone for the touchdown. What a great individual effort by Mike Trimble from 17 yards out on a little pass dumped in the left flat for the touchdown. And Dakota State answers the Hard Rockers quickly with a drive of their own. Yeah, number 30, Everett Brill and Tom Lundsman both had a shot at him way back at about the five-yard line. He was able to shake both those and uh, score the touchdown. So a touchdown pass for... Bagala as Berg's extra point is up and good, and there's a timeout on the field with 12.33 to play in the first half. The Hard Rocker lead has been cut. The Hard Rockers 10 and the Trojans 7. What's the number for the other side? 2353. 394. 2353. Huh? Yep. Enjoy the game. Well, I wasn't expecting that on third and 18, and then end up they score a touchdown. Too. That was a bad angle by the safety. That's how they got deep on that one. Uh, 
yard pickup. Yeah, great route by Tony. He was just running a deep in route, about 15 yards. Did a great job catching the ball with his hands, not letting that ball get into his chest. First down, Hard Rockers now at the Trojan 37. And a great throw by uh, Sanchez into the win. Here's the snap. Sanchez back again, throws it in the flat to Barth. He's at the 35, upended and cartwheels at the 32-yard line. Short gain on the play. It'll be second down, and the Hard Rockers uh, kind of going to that hurry-up offense that they showed against Montana Tech and had some success with it. Gain of four in that flat pass to Barth. Second and six from the Trojan 32. Here's the snap. Back to pass Sanchez, shoots it right side, and a great catch at the 17 by Tony Ostheimer. That'll be a first down. He kept the feet in bounds and fell out. Yeah, another great route by Tony, just running a deep uh, deep comeback on the outside there. Great throw by Joe Sanchez as well. Put that where only uh, Tony could catch it. First down at the 17-yard line. You know, in the School of Mines, you mentioned this, Tom, it's, not, it's a little more of a hurry-up than what we've seen in the past with Nick Russell where everybody's looking to get the uh, si uh, signals from the sideline. Here's Sanchez, play fake to Jamie Dale, rolls right, throws right side, caught inside the 10, and out near the 7-yard line is Andy, no, that's Jonathan Tristeo making the catch, his first catch this afternoon. And that should be a first down for the Hard Rockers at the seven-yard line. See if the Hard Rockers get conservative here or just kind of keep running with this thing, running these short and, and uh, medium to deep routes. Two receivers coming off to the left and one to the right. And Sanchez working out of the shotgun for the Hard Rockers at quarterback. Here's the snap. Hand off to Jamie Dale right up the middle. He bursts his way into the end zone for a touchdown from seven yards out. So that culminates a 56-yard drive for the Hard Rockers as Jamie Dale scores from seven yards out. And with 5.56 to play here in the first half, the Hard Rockers now lead the Trojans 16-7. Andy Smith is on for the extra point. Andy this season... Three out of three in extra points. Here's the snap. It's good, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. The Hard Rockers lead 17-7 to here on KKLS. So what do you think this is to do with uh I might just be because might just be because they were flat. I'm surprised it's two series, but maybe not. Maybe they're gonna say the second quarter was his. You know, Tom, that uh, touchdown and drive is huge for a couple of reasons. One is it takes a lot of time off the clock while Dakota State had the wind in their favor. And number two is you did score into the wind. So now you're almost forcing them to uh, to score into the wind as well if they want to keep up. Andy Smith kicks the ball down and a great, great field position by Allen not picking up that bouncing ball. That was a very heady play by the Trojan running back. And Dakota State will get the ball out at the 40-yard line. You know, and that's going to negate a great Smith, uh, a great uh, kickoff by Smith. I mean, those guys were cheating up around the 25 to 30-yard line. He kicked it over their head, and unfortunately, it just kept scooting and went out of bounds. So the Trojans have great field position, starting now at their own 40, moving from our right to left with 5:56 to play here in the first half. Hard Rockers leading by a score of. 17-7. to Bagala's up underneath center. Allen's the running back. 
Two receivers right, one to the left. Play fake to Allen. Back to pass. Begala, deep ball over the middle, overthrown for everyone, including the intended receiver, Stacy Berg, at the Hard Rocker 35. And Dakota State, having completed that one long pass earlier in the game for 50 yards, they've taken a few more shots down the field now. Yeah, Begala really kind of forced that one into double coverage. And as soon as, you know, it was such a long pass that actually by the time the ball got there, there was three de- uh, defenders from the School of Mines as the uh, – the uh, safety pulled off the tight end was going back into coverage as well. So kind of a little force there by Paul, which the first one we've seen all day today, really. Two receivers off to the right side. Here's the quarterback pitching the ball back. It's a bad snap to Allen, a bad pitch, and it's going to be recovered back at around the 31-yard line. And the quarterback, Bagala, did not make a good decision in that particular play, and Allen is going to get the loss, but... It was the bad pitch by Bagala. Loss of nine. Yeah, really kind of uncharacteristic of what we've seen so far today. You know, Bagala making two bad decisions in uh, two consecutive plays. Third and 19. Have we had this before? Trojans converted a third and 19 a couple of possessions ago, and that resulted eventually in their touchdown. Here's the snap. Bagala draw play. No. Where to go for Allen. He is tackled back at the 25-yard line by Tyrell Anderson. Tyrell wasn't fooling there. It's the 30, 25, 20, and he hurdles forward very close to a first down at the 18-yard line. Yeah, two great blocks out there by uh, the offensive lineman for the School of Mines. They're going to say that's a hard rocker first down, and the School of Mines is moving deeper into Dakota State territory here with 3.24 left in the half, and they already have a 17-7 lead. Here's the snap. Back to pass is Sanchez over the middle, picked off at the 5, coming back the other way across the 20, the 25, the 30. And the Hard Rockers give the ball up deep in Dakota State territory for the second time with an interception thrown by Joe Sanchez. Yeah, another one of those Joe just kind of, I mean, it was, the guy was open and it just kind of floated on him. One of those, again, when you throw it into the wind, a lot of times that wind will either kind of float it and carry it or it'll actually just push that thing straight into the ground. So, unfortunately on that one there, it just kind of kept floating right over the receiver's head and it was a nice interception and uh, returned all the way back out to about the 30, looks like about the 32-yard line. Joe Monazzi was the man who intercepted the pass. Here's the handoff and the running back goes nowhere. Handoff to Matt Engelman. No, yep, Engelman, the ball carrier. He's a freshman out of Miller. Yeah, just running an option right there, handed off to the fullback up the middle, and Everett Bill is uh, just kind of hanging out, waiting for him, and popped him a good one. Actually, probably dropped, looks like it dropped him for about a yard loss. Hard Rockers have had two red zone turnovers here in this first half on interceptions. Second down and 10 for the Trojans, a little bit more than 10 at their own 31-yard line. 2.28 left in the half. They have two timeouts left. Here's the snap to uh, Bagala. Looks to his right. He's under pressure. Scrambles up the middle. Crosses the 35. Crosses the 40. He's got a first down. Scrambling again. Comes out to the 43-yard line. So he picked up 11 and a Trojan first down. Yeah, coverage sack on that one there. He wanted to go throw it out to the right side. He had two options, two different routes, kind of a short and a medium route. Both of those were covered, so he just tucked it and ran. Ball on the Trojan 44-yard line. As we approach two minutes to play here in the first half, receivers left and right. Bagala with one running back behind him. That's Allen. And Drew Allen gets the handoff, and Everett Brill comes through and nails Allen back at the 40-yard line for a four-yard loss. By the way, Everett Brill's all over on that. Uh, It's almost like he's kind of just scouting. The running back on all plays. He's just got him no matter where he goes. Second down, 14 to go for Dakota State. 130 left in the half. Clock running. Receivers go left and right. Two receivers right, one to the left. Allen again is the only man in 
in the backfield. Short drop, right side pass by Bagala is incomplete. Ball thrown well ahead of the receiver, Kyle McIntyre, and that'll set up a third and 14 for the Trojans now at their own 40. Clock stopped, 1-10 to play here in the first half. Yeah, a lot of hand checking go over there, going on over there on that right side, but uh, again, they're doing everything they're supposed to do. As long as you turn that head, you can kind of just keep a feeler out there as long as you're not grabbing jersey. So on third and 14, Trojan send two receivers right, two to the left. No tight end. Bagala, straight drop back, throws it off to his left, and it's incomplete. Ball at the 44-yard line. Trojans will punt. 106 left in the half. They do have the win to kick this ball away. Tommy Lundsman will go back to return the kick for the School of Mines. Halftime, we'll look at the statistics. They have... A look at the Hall of Fame inductees. The kick away to Lundsman. He's going to let it bounce at the 15, at the 10, the 5, and it rolls into the end zone. Yeah, heads-up play by Tommy Lundsman there. As that thing was uh, looked like it wasn't going to quite make it into the end zone, so he went ahead and took out the deep uh, Dakota State guy just to make sure he didn't down it inside the 5. A 60-yard punt for Austin Hatton for Dakota State. Hard Rockers, Joe Sanchez, still a quarterback with the ball at the 20-yard line in 55 seconds to play. How aggressive do you be, Ryan? You know, that's going to be a question. I mean, I early in this possession. If uh, nothing comes out positive, probably see a lot of runs here just trying to uh, drain out that clock for halftime. So Sanchez will work out of the shotgun. Here's the snap. Throws it off right flat to Barth. He runs to the sidelines but can't get back to the line of scrimmage and loses three yards. I don't know that everything, you know, three weeks off for the School of Mines might have been a little too much, hard telling. But, um, you know, they just, they're just not quite fluid yet. They haven't quite got back into the groove, and maybe that's the reason we've seen Sanchez here for uh, a few series. They're introducing some of the Hard Rock, or the Hard Rock uh, Club Hall of Fame inductees. Lance Moriden has just been introduced. Uh, he's a football player from 1984. Uh, track and cross country, Tim Frank, a 1986 graduate. Rose schneider Pekarik, an all-around athlete inductee from 1986. The uh, basketball inductee, Jack Goff from 1950. Women's basketball, Steph Law from 1993. The teams are the tennis teams from the 70s, the three teams that made it to the NAIA National Tournament, 1973, 74, and 76. And the builder, a man who has helped uh, in many different ways, the Hard Rocker Athletic Program and the School of Mines recruit athletes, Jim Bauer, also being inducted here to the Hard Rocker Hall of Fame at halftime. They're being introduced uh, out there at uh, midfield. Dr. Bob Wharton from the School of Mines uh, congratulating each inductee as they receive their plaque. And it's hard to believe some of these players have been out of school that long. Uh, Ryan, when was your last year? My last year was in, uh, December of 96. So I think you'll become eligible in two more years. <laughs> you going to start writing that speech? I, I will start writing. I'm going to start sending <laughs> checks, um, <laughs> donations, whatever I need to do. Tom Rudabush, Retirement Fund and at U.S. Bank. <laughs> C-A-S-H, is that kind of the abbreviation for? Yes. Okay. We're going to get some statistics here shortly. It's 17-7. The Hard Rockers lead the Trojans here at halftime. You're listening to Hard Rocker Football on True Oldies 920 AM KKLS. You know, it's almost like they had too, you know, even the coaches get this way, too much time off. Hence the reason a reverse flea flicker. Thank goodness for that play. <laughs> Five. 
Brian, you want to look at those scores from some other games we've got uh, so far in the DAC? Yeah, so far in the DAC, we've got Mayville State at Black Hill State. Um, looks like uh, Black Hill State's actually winning that one somewhat handedly, 0-23, to still in the second quarter. At, uh, looks like at half, we've got Minot State, 21, Valley at Valley State, 10. And on the last game for the DAC, we got Dickinson State at Jamestown. Dickinson State is up 12-7 with five minutes left in the game on that one. So they've just got done introducing all of the School of Mines uh, athletic inductees. And uh, now we're going to have the Paulies halftime uh, <laughs> competition sponsored by Paulies Subs. We want to remind you that the host hotel of the School of Mines is the Alex Johnson Hotel. They offer special rates for fans coming in to watch games. Uh, a special rate of just $64. That includes their great continental breakfast, along with free wireless internet, exercise room, indoor pool with two hot tubs, all at the official host hotel for School of Mines Athletics, the Howard Johnson. And don't forget, uh, proud sponsors of the Hard Rockers, Knowledge of the Black Hills. Sign up today for the Edge, Edge Internet digital cable showtime free for 12 months smart choice phone hd dvr just 99 dollars a month for two years called knowledge 